Welcome to House of David Ministries. I'm Pastor Eric Michael Teitelman. Join me as we learn about the rich heritage of our Christian faith. In each episode, we explore a unique topic that will deepen your knowledge of Christ and who we are as His people. In this episode, we will discover the calling on the church to pray for Israel and to bless the Jewish people. Now, I'm often asked, how do I pray for Israel and how do I pray for Jewish people? The other question I'm often asked is, how can I provoke Israel to jealousy? Well, these are great questions, and as we're soon going to find out, the answers are actually rather quite simple. So let's first talk about how to pray for Israel. Now, there are several areas that I think are extremely important. First, we, of course, must pray for their salvation. And this requires us to pray that the veil that covers their eyes would be removed. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. So the Jewish people are being held captive in a great deception that has resulted in their outright rejection of their Messiah. And their expressed hatred of Yeshua borders on the irrational. But I've also been seeing a gradual softening of their hearts towards Christians who have displayed a love for the Jewish people. So before my father passed away a few years ago, I took him with me to a friend's church that genuinely loves Israel. They even had an Israeli flag hanging up in their sanctuary. My father was so surprised, and he asked me, what's our flag doing up there? And I said, these are the true Christians who love us. And he responded, they love us? Yes, they love us. He was so moved, almost to tears, that he said that he might even consider becoming one of them. In Luke chapter 4, Yeshua quotes Isaiah when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are pressed. So just like Yeshua, we are also called to free the captives so that they might receive the love of his truth. And we do this through prayer and fasting, just as Yeshua instructed in Matthew 17. He said, this kind of does not go out except by prayer and fasting. However, more than just praying for Israel's salvation, in the church, we are also called to intercede for them, to stand in the gap for Israel. I mean, Yeshua said on the cross in Luke 23, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the book of Joel, we see a picture of the church crying out for the salvation of Israel and their return to the land, even pleading with God to remove the defilement of his name. In chapter 2, it says, Let the priests, which implies those who are in Christ, who minister to the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, Israel, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? The redemption of Israel therefore, is the sanctification and restoration of God's name, while their exile continues to profane God's name amongst the nations. It says in Ezekiel 36, And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes, For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Now lastly, we must pray for the peace of Jerusalem, because in doing so, we are praying for the return of Christ. He is the Prince of Peace, and only when he returns to the earth that all Israel shall be saved, and the kingdom of God will be established in Israel from Jerusalem. On that day, the Lord said in Zechariah, I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. This means that all those living in Jerusalem, including the sons of Ishmael, will receive the Holy Spirit. So therefore, praying for Israel and the Jewish people should not preclude 
praying for the salvation of their Arab cousins. Imagine Israel as one nation stretching from the Mediterranean Sea to the Euphrates River and from Egypt all the way north to Assyria, bringing all the natural descendants of Abraham together as one people of God in Christ Yeshua. It says in Isaiah chapter 19, In that day Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt my people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel my inheritance. This is the only true peace plan that will ever succeed in the Middle East. Now, let's talk about how the church is going to provoke Israel to jealousy. I believe the church needs to be restored to a proper understanding of God's prophetic plans and kingdom purposes for the nation of Israel, including a proper understanding of God's calling for the church to come alongside Israel and to provoke them to jealousy. Paul said in Romans chapter 11, Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Now, Paul was not talking about the irrevocable gifts of the Spirit or other administrative gifts given to the church. Paul was talking about Israel's calling to be a light and a blessing to all the nations. These were his preceding words. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Paul was telling the church that once Israel received her Messiah, that she would be resurrected from the dead, and that this resurrection would not only bring life to the church, but would bring God's Spirit to the whole earth. This is when the kingdom of God will be established in the earth, and the kingdom of God itself, in fact, belongs to Israel. One day Yeshua's disciples came to him and asked, in Acts chapter 1, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, Yeshua gently told them that they need not worry about the time of his return, that they had much work to do, but the fact that he did not rebuke their question confirmed their understanding. The kingdom of God belongs to Israel. Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 9, For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises. Here we read that every promise made by the Lord to Abraham, Moses, and King David was for the Jewish people. And the nations, the Gentiles, share in these promises by the Lord's grafting them into Israel. It says in Ezekiel chapter 47, And it shall be that in whatever tribe the stranger dwells, there you shall give him his inheritance, says the Lord God. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers, in other words, sharers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. And the sharing of Israel's promises and blessings has been given to the nations because of Israel's transgressions, including their rejection of their Messiah. And yet the Lord made a promise to Israel that he would provoke the Jewish people to jealous anger. It will be the work of his Holy Spirit through the Gentile church that will provoke them. And the Lord spoke through Moses saying in Deuteronomy chapter 32, I will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. And he was speaking of a nation who was ignorant about the God of Israel and had no knowledge of him. In other words, he was speaking about the Gentiles. But the singular vernacular specifically indicates one Gentile nation. And could this possibly be the nation given and promised to the sons of Ishmael? It says in Genesis chapter 17, As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes and I will make him a great nation. So let us also pray for the salvation of Ishmael. So prayer is crucial. And yet still there are some practical things that God requires of us. First, we must love the Jewish people unconditionally, meaning without prejudice to their current spiritual condition. In fact, the church is supposed to love all people anyways. Yeshua said in John 13, 
By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Because Israel is God's firstborn son, the church must honor them like the older brother. Now, the secondborn of Abraham was Ishmael, even though he was the firstborn in the natural. Because we know that God chooses the one whom he wants, and not necessarily in the order that we are born. And so the church should actually also honor all the sons of Abraham. Now, next, I believe the church must preach the good news of the gospel to the Jewish people. It says in Romans 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So giving people bread without giving them the bread of life is not enough. Yeshua said in Matthew 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we need to feed their bodies and we need to feed their souls. Yes, they might reject the word and even despise us. But that's our calling as followers of Christ. I also believe the Gentiles are called to materially bless the Jewish people. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, If we have sown spiritual things for you, it is a great thing if we reap your material things. Now, anti-Semitic rhetoric often proclaims the Jews control most of the money in the world, and that really is a deception and a lie from Satan. In fact, 30% of the Jewish people living in Israel are living in poverty. And one of the most neglected groups of Christians in the world is our Messianic brothers and sisters who are living in Israel. And second to them are the Arab Christians. The church has and retains a mainly Western view of the world. So God's firstborn, Israel, and secondborn, Ishmael, are some of the least honored and most neglected people within the church. Now, lastly, I believe the church needs to be restored to its proper biblical messianic foundation, and it needs to understand and honor the sacred assemblies of the Lord. These include the Sabbath and the Lord's holy convocations, which are his feasts and his celebrations. And besides, who wants to miss a great celebration? Look what the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 25. In this mountain, which is going to be in Jerusalem, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees, and he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people which he's talking about Israel, he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Now, I'm going to go to this great party. So don't you want to come with me? The Lord established a Hebrew calendar that identifies the seventh day as the Sabbath. This is a day that is uniquely set apart and was sanctified and made holy or hallowed at the time of creation. The Lord also established seven yearly feasts and celebrations that create a cycle of expectancy for the return of our Messiah. The church and the world are obligated to follow God's calendar and not the other way around. Now, while these convocations are not required as a legal obligation or as any means of salvation, I believe that when the Jewish people see the church in mass celebrating and honoring the feast of the Lord with such zeal and spiritual passion that the Jewish people would begin to question what they might have been missing. They might even become angry and accuse the church of stealing their traditions and the things that they feel rightly belong to them. Well, they might be provoked to jealousy. Now, I continually hear stories about how certain people grew up in a Jewish neighborhood or how they have several close Jewish friends or family members. These are not coincidences or accidents. God has intentionally placed your feet in their path, and he has given you these associations for a purpose. So while the Jewish people have this irrevocable calling to be a light to the nations, the Gentiles also have an irrevocable calling to provoke Israel to jealousy. And so for this reason, it is the Lord's work and not necessarily yours or mine. He has anointed you and he will open doors for you. He will convict hearts. He will open eyes for the people to see his kingdom through you. 
So we are merely the vessels, the instrument in his hands for his work and his glory. And the Gentiles are ultimately called to restore God's heritage, Israel, and to rebuild his holy city, Jerusalem. It says in Isaiah chapter 49, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. And then in Isaiah chapter 60, the Lord goes on to say, The sons of foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I've had mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. And for this calling towards Israel, the Gentiles will receive the earth as an inheritance. God's kingdom will then be complete. Israel will be at the center and all the nations of the earth who are grafted into Israel will come up to Jerusalem to worship their God, the God of Israel. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. Amen. If you have enjoyed this teaching from House of David Ministries, make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to visit our website where you can sign up for our monthly newsletter. We pray the Lord richly bless you and we look forward to having you join us again for our next episode.